Hashimoto's and fibromyalgia are two of the most annoying disorders out there. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid illness. Fibromyalgia is a disorder that leads to bone and muscle pain across the whole body. Both diseases cause fatigue, mood, memory and sleep problems. Fibromyalgia affects about 5 in 100 people. However, up to 410 people are diagnosed with Hashimoto's. What could be the deal here? Common symptoms. You will find several symptoms that can be identical between hypothyroidism and fibromyalgia, in addition to several which are more familiar with one condition than the other. Symptoms that are extremely frequent among the two individuals with hypothyroidism and people with fibromyalgia include fatigue, exhaustion, and non-restful sleep body aches, muscular and joint soreness, kidney problems are frequently referred to as brain fog, depression and anxiety. Given their shared symptoms and the fact that both conditions can be tough to diagnose, it may seem evident that thyroid diseases, primarily, hypothyroidism, and fibromyalgia might be associated with one another. Having one of these disorders can, in actuality, predispose one to the other, and suffering from both impacts each other. Despite the apparent relations, nevertheless, theories about the origin of these associated conditions are not concrete. Researchers have proposed autoimmunity, malfunction of the hypothalamus, viral and bacterial infections. Is fibromyalgia an autoimmune disease? Some researchers say that it could be, a condition primarily affecting the central nervous system. Hashimoto's is suggested as an underlying cause or a few of the reasons for fibromyalgia. So, the link with a damaged immune system does exist. Fibromyalgia treatment. To cure fibromyalgia, one must correct the lifestyle and work closely with a doctor and a physical therapist. Three medications that might be prescribed to alleviate fibromyalgia symptoms include duloxetine, milnisipran, and pregabalin. Of the other treatments, acupuncture, massages, movement remedies, and supplements are reported to have some amount of positive effect. Not only are Hashimoto's and fibromyalgia both common disorders, but they also usually occur together. As we mentioned previously, according to a study, the frequency of fibromyalgia in public was 2 to 7 percent, but as large as 30 to 40 percent in people who have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. Using newer diagnostic criteria for fibromyalgia, the prevalence may be considerably higher. Among men and women with Hashimoto's, fibromyalgia was more common in overweight people, had positive antithyroperoxidase antibodies and lived with thyroid disorder for a very long period. The best way to reduce pain. The most common conventional way to reduce pain will always be utilizing pain medications. Opiate medications are one of the most common types of pain relievers used. Most drugs have their period and place. Instead of glorifying or demonizing medications, health professionals and patients will need to be educated about appropriate medication usage and complementary treatments to eradicate or lessen the demand for drugs. Opiates work by disconnecting our pain receptors from the pain signals, which makes us forget that we're in pain. While those medications are effective, band-aids, for pain relief for many individuals, they are also habit-forming. Interestingly, Synthroid was the number one prescribed medication in 2013 and 2014 in the United States. In 2015, Synthroid fell to number two and was displaced by Vicodin. Such medications are a constant source of controversy. On the one hand, they are overused. Patients become addicted to them and suffer ill consequences. Frequently, these people had other choices for addressing their pain but weren't informed. On the flip side, those who are suffering from terminal diseases, seriously injured, along with many others who may gain from opiate medications, often don't get access due to the health care community's concern with these medications. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are often the first-line treatment for pain issues, helping reduce inflammation and pain. Regrettably, they have also been involved with numerous side effects, leading to gut disorder, including an increased probability of ulcers. For short-term usage, the occasional headache, or various injuries, they can be beneficial but the more we take them, the more likely we are to suffer adverse reactions.
We also realize that pain medications do not address the root cause of the pain, and hence we need to take a more detailed approach to reduce pain. Nutrition interventions. A whopping 62% of men and women reported removing nightshade veggies from their diet assists reduce their pain. Nightshades consist of tomatoes, potatoes, bell peppers, eggplants, cherry tomatoes, goji berries, and ashwagandha. As a negative, even if you're not in pain, hot, capsaicin-containing peppers have the propensity to induce leaky gut, which means they too could potentially contribute to autoimmune disorders. It might be tough to stop eating those foods, but they can make a world of difference for many people. Try out a non-nightshade diet for two weeks to determine whether this makes a difference for you. Low FODMAPs diet. 48% saw improvement in pain with all the non-FODMAPs diet, typically used for small intestinal bacterial vaginosis also helped individuals with problems. The autoimmune paleo diet, which removes grains, nightshades, and legumes, however, not FODMAPs, helped yet another 50% of people with pain. A number of these didn't have a problem being an initial symptom, so the 50% may seem low. Additional diet plans which have been reported to decrease pain range are the gluten-free diet 47%, the grain-free diet 43%, in addition to an egg-free diet 40%. Autoimmune thyroid disorder usually results in some worsening of fibromyalgia symptoms. Fibromyalgia can also enhance thyroid disease indicators or allow it to be even more challenging to know whether thyroid hormone replacement therapy is optimal. Diagnosing fibromyalgia even though fibromyalgia is a well-known condition, it is a challenge to diagnose it. The majority of people will have to see several doctors before receiving fibromyalgia identification. Fibromyalgia symptoms may appear and disappear, varying in intensity from day to day and from the human body's location, contributing to the identification's difficulty. Some doctors might try to assess the severity of the pain and also the area of the problem. Some of the most common symptoms are Exhaustion waking up tired after the entire night's sleep memory problems When you suspect you are suffering from fibromyalgia, then talk to your doctor. Be patient when speaking with a physician, it's not an easy condition to diagnose, and your accurate description may help considerably with the diagnosis. Living with these conditions in addition to choosing some other recommended medications, there are things you can do yourself, which can allow you to live your life along with both of these conditions. Exercise. While the fatigue associated with thyroid disorder and fibromyalgia can make you avoid exercise, you can find many advantages. Exercising when you have thyroid disorder can boost energy levels, improve mood, and enhance metabolism in those fighting weight issues. On the flip side, however, exercise together with fibromyalgia can be considered a little more tricky. While mild exercise is often beneficial, many people today undergo a substantial worsening of fibromyalgia-related fatigue after training that's been coined post-exertional malaise. Since everyone differs, it's essential to understand your own body. Keeping a daily journal of exercising and energy may allow you to determine the appropriate volume of activity that's useful for you. Reduce stress. Stress management is vital for anyone but especially crucial for individuals with those two disorders. Not only do thyroid disease and fibromyalgia contribute to everyday stress levels, but higher stress could aggravate their symptoms. Since some stressor can't be expunged, researchers have begun to look at ways people can form emotional durability, basically the ability to deal with adversity in life. There are nowadays several integrative medical centers that provide resilience training for individuals dealing with chronic health problems. Get better sleep. Both illnesses commonly cause sleep issues such as insomnia and night sweat. Sleep problems exacerbate the other signs of thyroid disorder and fibromyalgia. Considering that the value of sleep concerning such symptoms, it's well worth taking a list of your sleep hygiene and habits and making changes to set up for a fantastic night's sleep. If you still have questions, speaking with a physician or seeing a sleep specialist may be helpful. Change your diet. A healthy diet is wise for anyone, but a few foods that are usually considered very beneficial have anti-thyroid results, 
such as nightshades vegetables, dairy, gluten products, sugar, etc. Conclusion As you see, there's a plausible argument to be made that almost every sign of fibromyalgia might be related to hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. This begs the issue of precisely what to do. Much like all matters linked to Hashimoto's and fibromyalgia, we're once again reminded that these are multi-system diseases. It's a lot more than only a thyroid problem, and it needs a sophisticated approach if you would like to have it under control.